Hello people of the earth and welcome to the front page fables. Today I have some amazing cheating stories but before. Caught my pregnant fiance cheating with Snapchat. This was a few years back. At the time I was M48 and she F34. We had been living together for some time and her 13 year old daughter also lived with us. She was pregnant with my son but in the first trimester. Now there were plenty of red flags along the way. She was pretty conceited and required a lot of validation. In her earlier years, she was a published model. Nothing huge, just stuff like FHM and Maxim and assorted local magazines and such. Well on to the how she got caught. I along with one of my sons from a previous marriage was meeting for lunch at a local steakhouse. I let her we can call her Jay for ease here well, I told Jay that my son and I would be having lunch and told her she was welcome to join us. She happily agreed and along with her daughter, we met at the restaurant at the prescribed time. Jay and her teen daughter were both giving me the stink eye as they arrived. I could feel tension in the air. We were seated and ordered drinks. I was trying to make small talk. Jay was seated across the table rather than next to me, and she was glaring at me. Finally, with the urging of her daughter, she asked, Is there something you would like to tell me? I was looking her over and her daughter. Their body language was telling the story. They thought they had some smoking gun and were employing all the dramatics. The problem was I had nothing to confess, and now I had to pry their suspicions out of them. For some quick background big red flag she had on more than one occasion accused me of being unfaithful. It simply wasn't true. I mean this is one of those women who might have a dream, and you will be punished in the morning if it was bad. Lol. Well anyway she is repeating her question, and I cut her off. I told her to tell me what her latest accusation was going to be and I let her know I was pretty tired of this behavior and she was making our future seem impossible. This shocked her a bit so she demanded to see my phone. I happily obliged and she searched it over and over, going through every text and finally opening up my Snapchat app. Then turning the phone so everyone seated could see I had the app. She seemed triumphant in this and demanded I explain myself. I must have looked bewildered as I sat there blinking and wondering how this meant anything at all. Jay went on a dissertation about how Snapchat was for cheating and I had no business having an account. Her daughter you see discovered I had the account. Or so they anyway I am still blinky and have added subtle head shaking to my response. She feeling she had me cornered demanded I explain myself. She was being especially dramatic and drawing attention to our table with her theatrics. I suggested calmly she peruse my contacts and tell me who I am having the illicit affair with. She obliged me as she deftly navigated Snap like a veteran ultimately finding no contacts or posts of any kind. As a bit of background, I am a security engineer and many of my clients are educational institutions from K through 12, community colleges to universities including some Ivy League and international business schools. I have accounts with pretty much every social networking app there is. It's for work. It often falls to be to ensure they work or they are metered or outright blocked on various campuses depending on the age group of the attendees. So yes I have these apps because it's really convenient to just whip out a tablet or phone to test my work. Now my son knew this and he burst out laughing at the accusation and the ignorance of her assumption. Before I could say a word to defuse the situation he jumped in and set her straight. I calmed him down and we both chuckled at it. Jay and her daughter weren't convinced and pressed only to be silenced as I raised my hand in a gesture for the check. I told her I invited her here for a nice lunch, and she and her daughter have ruined it over their crazy accusations. I was leaving they ruined the meal, and when I got home we could address her concerns privately and calmly. After paying the bill I got up and my son and I began leaving. She got pretty pissed and she followed us out yelling we aren't through with the conversation. In the parking lot. I demanded she let me go through her phone. She shrieked that I wasn't going to make this about her. I needed to answer her questions. I pointed out that both her and her daughter have the app they are saying is only for cheaters and I want to view them now. They both went white and she repeated I am not going to blame Shift. I responded by saying she either let me view her phone or she packed her things and we were through. She turned on the waterworks and began crying that she was pregnant with my child how dare I accuse her of anything. Her daughter screaming while my son just smirked and taunted them both. I instructed my son to make sure they didn't do anything in my house and I had to go back to work and left. My son was 17 and a senior in HS 
The school year had just ended, so I let him drive one of my cars, and he raced them to the house and got there first according to him, taking the better spot in the garage. My son said they spent the next hour or more locked upstairs in the daughter's room, and when she came out Jay was trying to act like everything was okay and asked my son what he wanted for dinner. I am sure it will not be a surprise to anyone, but when I got home Jay apologized for her outburst and promised it was just hormones, that she should never treat me like, and then handed me her phone and said I was allowed to look it over any time I liked, that she trusts me and wants me to trust her. I went to my home office and set the phone on my desk, logged into my PC, and checked my email. She was hovering and asked if I was going to look at it. I said I would in a bit, but had to wrap up a couple things, then asked if she needed right away. She smiled and said, take your time. Now, as I mentioned, I am a security engineer. As soon as she left, I looked at her phone that had just been factory reset and had a couple dozen sub one minute calls to assorted friends and some banter text messages from a few of her friends. Shockingly, all of them in the last few hours to appear that the phone has been used regularly. I installed a Big Brother app on her phone and put it in the same spot on my desk. Maybe 30 minutes later, she came and checked on me. The phone was sitting there seemingly untouched, and she asked if I had gone through it. I told her no, I was still working, but she could take it if she liked. I am just too busy right now to go through it. Well, to just cut to the chase. I monitored her activities closely for the next few weeks, and yes, she was cheating. Worse with more than one guy. I confronted her with the evidence for which she called the police on me for violating her privacy. The police came, and she put on quite the show. I showed them that I paid for the phones and the house was in my name only. She was given a warning. I told her she would need to pack up and she tried to use sex to change my mind. I rebuffed her attempts and let her know the very idea was revolting to me. I moved her things into a guest room, let her know she needed to find a new place to live, and suggested she ask one of her many boyfriends. A couple of days later she threatened me with an unloaded revolver of which my neighbor witnessed. The police were again called only she was taken away in cuffs. We never did get married, but before my baby son was one year old, I was the custodial parent and two years later her parental rights were revoked. She isn't allowed anywhere near us. This wasn't cheap, it cost me over 300k, but while painful well worth it to ensure my son has every opportunity for a good life. The sister has tried to connect a couple of times with no result. There was a lot more drama on her part to be sure, but these stories have to be kept to a reasonable length. I'll add this one thing though. Jay never broke my heart because I just couldn't give it to her. I was only going to marry her because of the baby. Yes, this is a bad idea, but I am old-fashioned and wanted my son to grow up in an intact home. Lastly, before anyone asks, the court ordered a paternity test on day one. He is mine. Serial cheating partner. I need a bit of advice, please, guys. Please try be respectful but honest. So me 26F and my partner 34M have been together nearly two years and live together. For a bit of backstory, we started out as a one night stand. The night we slept together, I did not know he had a girlfriend at the time. And when I did find out he had a girlfriend, I quickly ended things and felt horrible that I could do that to another woman. Especially when they had been together 11 years. He gave it the whole it shouldn't have happened, and I should have ended it with her a lot sooner as H. Dick, but long story short, I gave him a chance. I'd not long since got out of an abusive relationship and wanted to be loved and cared for. He's only been with three women myself included, and after we started living together, I found out he did not tell me. I asked him myself that he cheated on his first partner too, with the woman he dated for 11 years. So all three of us have overlapped, and he has never been single since his first partner. I then found out that he cheated on his ex of 11 years three other times before me. I tried ending the relationship there and then, but he made me feel horrible saying I shouldn't judge him for his past and that me of all people should understand this talking about the abuse I went through, so I stayed with him and didn't want to hurt him. Before we lived together, his ex still lived with him for the first four months or so of our relationship as he didn't want to kick her out on the streets which I understand. I have been homeless three times and wouldn't wish it on anybody. I was supportive of this and never had an issue with it. Fast forward to when she moved out, I told him I didn't have a problem with him talking to her every now and then, making sure she's okay as she suffers mental health issues, and just being a friend to her in general as I was very secure about myself at this point. Then that's when the lies started. 
seeing her behind my back claiming nothing ever happened, deleting their messages, muting her message notifications so they wouldn't pop up on his phone. I never went through his phone until I was suspicious as to why her messages didn't show anymore, and that's when I saw he had muted them. I called him out on this, and he denied it, quickly unmuted them and called me crazy for even thinking he'd do that. Then after a few hours of arguing and denying it, he admitted it to me. One time I was very sad and crying because of him lying to me about talking to her and seeing her. And at the same time, she also called him on the phone upset, and he left me alone, crying to answer the phone to her and comfort her instead. Every time I have tried talking to him about his past of cheating, he's cheated five times in total, and he just says I don't know and gets mad when ask him for clarification as a lot of what he says contradicts other things he says. Or if I ask him questions. If I tell him I need to know everything in order to make the best decision for me, he says I'm controlling. I don't listen. I dismiss everything he says. I don't accept what he says, that I'm ignorant to him, and that his past doesn't define him. I honestly don't know what to do. I have tried leaving him before, but he just gets so hurtful, blames me for everything, and in general just makes it living hell for me to be at home. I have been abused for more than half of my life by seven different men, sexually, physically, and mentally. I had an abusive mother who took my dad away from me and made me homeless at a young age. And it's just been me on my own trying my best to survive. This has caused me to have anger issues, control issues, severe PTSD and severe trust issues, all of which I hold myself fully responsible for and pay for private therapy to try my hardest to work through all of them. I'm nowhere near perfect as a person or girlfriend, but I try so hard to do the best and right thing by people and always want to see the best in people and believe everyone deserves second chances. I'm sorry it's so long, but if anybody has any real, honest advice they can give me please, I'm open to anything at this point. Edit. Just for clarification, he hasn't cheated on me as far as I know, but has lied about his interactions with women on nights out and blamed me for lying by saying he was scared to tell me such an innocent thing. My boyfriend has a girl best friend. My boyfriend Jack has a girl best friend. They met in the first year of high school 11 years old, and although it's been evident that he's not her best friend, Jack has always insisted that the girl, Ella, is his best friend. Jack and I have been dating for over six months, but knew each other since the beginning of high school too, but became friends around four years ago. One thing to note about Jack is that although he has never been properly diagnosed, he is probably autistic and is the most socially unaware person I know. Jack's whole friend group is just girls, he is the only guy. Even though I did assume that Jack was gay for a bit, I absolutely loved that he had female friends, because that meant that not only would I have more girlfriends, Jack also knew how to set healthy boundaries with girls. However, the more our relationship progressed, I realized that those boundaries were non-existent when it came to Ella. My discomfort with Ella began right from the beginning, when Ella would smack Jack's ass or try to poke his butthole because his reaction made her laugh. But knowing that they had been friends for six years, I hid my uneasiness. The thing is, this is Ella's sort of humor, and she unashamedly does this to guys and girls, including me. We would frequently joke around making sexual jokes and insinuating that me and Ella were wives. However, she would only act like this towards me when Jack was around, and whenever it was just us she was cold and distant. Now, Jack loves PDA. He is unafraid to show his affection for me in front of everyone his friends, my friends, our families, etc. And although I love that he is unashamed to openly love me, I let him know that it can be excessive and is making some of our friends uncomfortable. One of the friends showing obvious discomfort was Ella. Every time he would put his arm around my shoulder, or hold my hand, or kiss my hair which I think are perfectly acceptable to do in public, Ella would pull a face, or say things ranging from you to you should add a third person into your relationship, to which her friends would giggle and say that Ella was jealous of a healthy, happy relationship and that she wanted to be a part of ours. I convinced myself that Ella was uncomfortable with Jack's obvious affection for me because she hadn't healed from a past traumatic relationship and was jealous that one of her closest friends had gotten into a relationship before she did. In fact, another girl in his friend group who I am very close with, Alyssa, reacted the same way she was upset that Jack got a girlfriend before she did, but the difference was that Alyssa was very obviously happy for us. Other than those comments mentioned before, 
Throughout the past six months, Ella did things such as yelling break up with Jack across the classroom we shared. At first I thought it was funny and played along, yelling maybe back to her and Jack thought it was funny too. But things gradually progressed to her coming up to tell me in private to break up with Jack, or coming to where my friends and I hung out and telling me I should break up with him, which is where my suspicions started. We had prom coming up and us girls all decided to let each other know what color dress we'd be wearing because you know. Girl code. I picked burgundy and sent a photo of my dress, and Ella followed up by saying she would be wearing a dark green dress. Surprise, surprise, two days before the prom, Ella showed everyone her burgundy dress with the same neckline, satin aligned skirt, and sequin placement as mine. It bothered me, as Jack would also be wearing red to match me, but now he was also matching with his girl best friend. Ella asked me what I thought and to mask my pain. I jokingly said that Ella was in love with me and wanted to match with me, but she left me on read. About four months in, we went to a mutual friend Melissa's party. Melissa and I also joked around how we were in love and we were wives or how Melissa, Ella and I were a throuple. During this party, we had a panada and one thing you should know is that Jack is a fiend for sweet things. I looked away for one second and when I tell you I was appalled when I saw Ella feeding Jack candy into his mouth only promising to give him the candy once he would beg her for it and call her mommy on his knees. Ella kept looking at me and giggling while Jack kept begging for more. I was in shock and up until this point I hadn't gotten the Ike from Jack, but this made my stomach churn. I wasn't jealous that Jack had called another woman mommy. I genuinely felt disgust and secondhand embarrassment for both of them. The thing that led to me wanting to have a serious talk with Jack was when we went to another party at a beach. Ella was also there. It was in the evening, and the winds were getting stronger but Ella and Jack, as well as a couple others from the party insisted on swimming a little more. I waited for them on the shore with their towels, since I was shivering and sore from salt rash. When the two got out and I handed them their towels, Ella got on her tippy toes, whimpered the words I'm cold into his ear, and cuddled up to Jack, first hugging his shoulders and then moving her hands around his waist and burying her face in his chest while I was right there. Jack looked at me confused and with concern in his eyes, but I remember quickly looking away. Up until this point I convinced myself I was being jealous or overly protective of Jack, but this really set me off. I talked to Melissa first, and she admitted that she thought Ella was a pick-me girl. This surprised me because Melissa was Ella's actual best friend, but I let her speak and Melissa told me about how in the past year, Ella had been flirting and leading on every guy and then rejected them using her traumatic past relationship to excuse her behavior. Melissa told me that Ella had been saying how she was frustrated that Jack wasn't as easy as the other men and wouldn't fall for her like all the other guys. When I eventually collected myself and talked to Jack, he was unresponsive, with his back turned to me and fiddling with his hands. In fact, the first thing he did was make a joke about how me, him and Ella should have a threesome. I left his house and texted him letting him know that I was willing to end our relationship over this, which made him perk up and we set a date to have a proper conversation so we did. I went over the things Ellie had been doing, saying, and how her friends had clocked all of this. Jack told me that he only picked up on it after Ella had cuddled up to him on the beach, and said that he thought it was fucked up that his closest friend was crushing on him. Not fucked up that his self-proclaimed girl bestie was making me feel awful and uncomfortable, but fucked up because Ella had a crush on him. Jack apologized for not noticing earlier, and said that he couldn't tell the signs because of his autism and the lack of social awareness that came with it. We discussed boundaries and came to a mutual agreement on what we both considered cheating. But Jack said that he was unwilling to talk to Ella about her behaviors because it would be too awkward. Turns out that one of my guy friends Oliver had fallen for Ella, and while all this crap between me, Ella and Jack was unfolding, Oliver had asked Ella out, taking advantage of the fact that she was cornered. Knowing she couldn't deny that she was flirting with a taken man, she said yes to beat the rumors. They went on one date where she proceeded to put makeup on him and grind on his lap, then unsurprisingly rejected him like all the other guys, but asked him to keep it a secret so that her reputation wouldn't be ruined. He told me afterwards I told Jack who said that he felt sorry for Ella. I cut off Oliver for good, since I don't want to be friends with a man who takes advantage of people, even if it was a homewrecker and a pick-me-girl like Ella. 
I have gone no contact with Ella as of then Jack hasn't. I know that I won't be able to be at peace as long as their friendship continues, but I love Jack and he loves me. Although I have hinted at Jack cutting her off, this would mean that Jack has to cut all of his friends in that group off too, and I know that's cruel. A lot of my friends from his group are still friends with Ella, including Alyssa and Melissa, and although I've been trying to leave it be, it hurts so much. I fully trust Jack around Ella, but I don't trust her, since she has been taking advantage of his unawareness to hurt me. As a last-ditch effort, I told Jack about the microaggressions and hateful looks she'd been throwing me, and he validated my feelings, saying that I would know women better than he ever would and that he believes me, but he still won't cut her off. Am I being unreasonable for wanting him to? His other girlfriends are fine. In fact, I love them, and I think that they've made my relationship with Jack better. No other girl has irked me like Ella has. I feel like I'm going insane. Cheated and regret it all. First of all, yes, I know I'm every name in the book. I've been saying the same thing in the mirror. Open to all feedback, positive and negative. So, me 21M and my now ex 21F had been together just over a year. We are both at the same uni and were introduced through a mutual friend. The year was amazing. It was nothing I'd ever experienced as she was my first girlfriend. But even beyond it being my first for a lot of the relationship things, it was so beautiful. We laughed hard, loved hard, and occasionally had stir-ups. The first 11 months were pure bliss. It just felt perfect. I drunkenly said to my sister one night I'd marry the girl. She made me laugh, made me smile, listened to me, made me feel like the only boy in the world. And then I started feeling like I was going toward a path that wasn't what I wanted in the long run. I had thoughts about okay, so we get to one year, and then what? Thoughts about whether I wanted to be with one person for the rest of my life. And being the idiot I was, I kept all these thoughts bottled up. I was afraid to tell her that I was having these thoughts. I spoke to my close friend who had been in a similar place, and he told me to think about what I want. And things felt like they got better in my head for a couple weeks. I was happy and content. I felt like I was going to be able to commit to her. Then we celebrated our one-year anniversary with a lovely date night. And then when I went home and was alone with my thoughts, all these negative worrying thoughts came back. A couple weeks go by and we spend a few days together here and there. I had this overwhelming feeling that I needed to let her know the truth about what I was feeling, but I just couldn't bring myself to tell her, which I hate myself for now. And then I went home and went on a holiday with some friends. On this holiday was a lot of drinking, which is no valid excuse for anything. But I was drinking a lot, half liter of spirit, multiple pints. And then it happened. I don't even know how it happened now. I don't know if it's so suppressed in my memory out of shame or just the alcohol causing me not to remember. But I do remember a kiss. A very short kiss where I realized what I was doing and pulled out of. I immediately left the club and sat myself on a bench. The next two hours I just hung my head in shame. I could not believe what I did. I was distraught. And then when I got back I realized I had lost my phone. I spent an hour looking for that. Then went to bed. I woke up feeling shameful and hungover. And without phone, I ended up finding my phone a couple hours later on my friend's person. And this whole morning I spent walking around just carrying the guilt and thoughts of my actions last night. And then I made my third mistake. I didn't tell my girlfriend what had happened. I initially thought I'd just keep it quiet because she'd never know. So I carried on my holiday. And no, I didn't do anything else after that kiss. When I got home a few days later and had my first night in bed not surrounded by my mates and not feeling the effects of alcohol. It all hit me like a fucking train. The bullet train of remorse and guilt it felt like. I lay in bed, and for the first time in my life, I felt my heart rate pounding in my chest, and this overwhelming sense of panic anxiety, and I realized I was having an attack of some sort. It was horrible, and I knew I just couldn't hold the truth in from anyone any longer. I didn't sleep that night, not well or for long anyway. Even with my dog as a comfort on my bed. The next morning messaged my mum telling her I needed to speak. The moment she entered my room it all came pouring out of me. I was sobbing into her shoulder. I could barely get my words out to describe what I had done. She hugged me and told me we all make mistakes and that I'm only human. I knew I had to tell her at this point what had happened. But before telling her I was trying tea to think of why I did this. 
I believed that I kissed this girl because my heart was not truly in the relationship anymore, or I had fallen out of love. Maybe they're the same thing, since we are in different cities and I felt it was a priority to tell her right now. I selfishly FaceTimed her and told her over the phone. Yes, I know I'm a cunt. And to make it even worse, I told her I couldn't commit to our relationship and that I don't think it's what I want. She understandably hung up on me and proceeded to message me about it. I ended up telling her I felt I had fallen out of love with her. That was three days ago. The past three days have been the worst of my life. Every time I think about what kind of pain she's going through, it causes knee pain and I feel sick. I'm ashamed of my actions, but even more ashamed of how I handled things after. I owed it to her to do it in person. Although now I'm stuck because I feel I fucked up as a whole and that I still love her. But I know she deserves better than a coward like me. I threw the best girl I've ever known away because I couldn't confront and share to the one person who is in my corner my own feelings of doubt. I do not know how I can forgive myself for hurting her like that. I don't know if I'll ever be able to even forgive myself for my actions. Surely I'm this doesn't define who I am. Have all my 21 years of kindness and love been tarnished by one terrible week? It feels like I still love her so much, but how could I hurt someone I supposedly love like that? I'm so fucking lost. Anyway, I asked to see her face to face, and she understandably told me she can't see me yet, and that my actions were all the closure she needed. I feel like the biggest idiot in TH world, but I deserve everything that's coming to me now. I don't deserve her back. I didn't even fight for her when I should have. Anyway, that's my story. Feel free to let me know I'm an ah, or to tell it me it will get better. Either way, I hope she is able to be happy again with someone who treats her better than me. P.S. Throw away obs. Respect is a two-way street. I'm gonna keep this. Straightforward and to the point. Of course there is a backstory, but for intent and purposes it comes down to this. My BF has cheated on me numerous times. Does he deserve to be spoken to with respect? I wanted to keep the explanation of this situation simple so as to help prove my point, but for anyone still reading what I wrote and taking the time to respond to me. Much appreciated. Everyone has responded with true feelings and that's all I could ever ask for. Genuine. I believe that the person I've called BF for the last 11 hours is a covert narcissist. Actually, I'm convinced. After as a feeling like I was crazy, being told I was crazy, etc. I woke up one morning and said to myself, I've always been a pretty grounded person. What is happening to me? I no longer recognized myself in the mirror, nor did I like the way I was acting. Some old behaviors is worked so hard to get through and put behind me. We're back with a vengeance. Passive aggressive. I knew my BF was passive aggressive. So I started there and with nearly two plusers of research, analyzing myself and him, I came to the conclusion or realization that my BF is a covert narcissist. Never even knowing there was more than one type of narcissist, and I can't tell you how many times I cried after reading about the way he does things and how he treats me, and that there are actual names for these behaviors, and that I wasn't crazy. Or at least not in the sense he's tried to make me believe I was. My BF is a textbook covert narcissist. He hits every bullet point, not missing a single one. Of characteristics, that is. He told me I was a narcissist. I immediately was concerned. What I knew of narcissism, I did not want to be a narcissist. Recently, I told him that he is the narcissist. His immediate response to me was, No, I'm not. Case closed. You're a true and through covert narcissist. If you can even use the word true in describing a covert narcissist. Lol, so I'm stuck. Financially not working. Couldn't work. Learning it's a side effects of the abuse along with the ADHD and CPSD I now have. No self-confidence left or self-worth. So respecting myself prob ran for the ilzers ago. Like I wish I would have done. I've no family where I now live. Friends. I've tried but my BF has taken all of them too along with every birthday and holiday. People having experienced covert narcissist abuse will understand what I mean about holidays. Anywho, I've gone on long enough. I'm slowly waking up from this nightmare and slowly getting back on my feet. It's difficult doing those things while having to still be around the person that has treated me so bad. I didn't want to live while I was pregnant with his baby. I'm doing it, day by day. I have stimulus money I've saved for just this scenario. I'll be buying a car, getting my license, 
Yes, that went away too, and then a job, somewhere other than here, and then find a safe place for my son and I to live. Live, finally live and God willing, have love back in our lives. I don't want anyone to feel bad for my situation. I had my own pity party and it's over now. Baby steps, but I'm getting stronger. It might take me a while, but I've no other choice. If I stay and not actively work towards my goal of freedom, I may not make it or my BF may not make it, and neither of those are an option in my life ever. So for now, I'm going to continue to speak disrespectfully to my BF. He deserves it, and it has me feeling a bit better and gives me the strength I need to continue working towards my goal of freedom for my son and myself. Thank you all very much for your candid, honest, and heartfelt responses to my crazy question. Lol funny, not funny. Take care all, don't do what I've done, and have a great rest of your days here on Earth.